Jason Rubin from Naughty Dog. PlayStation Underground's asked me to tell you a little bit about Crash Bandicoot 3, War. I wanted to be sure that we preserve the classic intuitive gameplay that has made the Crash series so successful. We found that gamers worldwide truly enjoy the structured interactions of this style. The second thing we wanted to do with Crash Bandicoot Warp is that we wanted to introduce free roaming gameplay. To add excitement, we've created some radically new styles of levels. You still have a mission-based objective, but at the same time, the camera is opened up and you're free roaming. In addition, we wanted to broaden the replay value of the game so that players got more for their money, they got more bang for the buck. We added a time trial mode, but now they can race against the clock, they can compete against their friends, their brothers, their sisters, and they can put up scores with their names in it to show exactly how well they've done. In the succession from Crash 1 to Crash 2 to Crash Warped, we as a team, and I personally, have learned a tremendous number of things. In Crash 1 and 2, the, the maximum distance at which you could see any polygon was about 70 meters. In Crash Warped, we've opened that up to 700 and some odd meters. Like in the medieval levels, there's a, a castle at the end that you can see nearly from the beginning of the level. And as you go through almost a kilometer of level distance, like you keep seeing the castle every time you get closer and closer as you go over press. Because we've been able to achieve things that just haven't been seen before on the PlayStation. One of the accomplishments that we did in Crash Bandicoot uh, Cortex Strikes Back is we had Crash be able to wade into water and to subdivide perfectly in the water, which is something that really not been seen before on the PlayStation. And at first, there was some debate whether it was feasible. Now we've gone another step in Crash Bandicoot Warp, we have entire rounds where everything is floating in the water. We have environment mapping against waves, and the waves are moving in a very realistic ocean pattern, but you can see the reflections of the world in the waves, which gives a very, very realistic effect. I think most people, including ourselves, until this project thought it was not possible to pull off that, that many things, that much subdivision in a level, that you just would not have the speed to do something like that. I think the way we pulled it off was with perseverance and with trying things and just keep working at it and working at it and working at it until we were able to get within the frame rate that we, that we wanted. We've learned a tremendous amount about gameplay. Making a new mechanic and trying to make it play well and work with Jason's animation for the character because it all has to integrate together. Crash is like driving along on the motorcycle and he turns, he's got to bring the motorcycle down, put his knee on the ground like the way a real motorcycle rider does. And so there's a real interaction between the gameplay programming, controlling the feel of that motorcycle and the animation. And that's probably one of the most important programming things. If the game doesn't feel good, if it's clunky, then it's not fun. When we uh, approach a level, this is an example, this is Arabian level M. It's basically somewhere about two-thirds of the way into the game. Um, we think in terms of the player's abilities at that point, and we also think in terms of the, the character's abilities. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do was bounce on tarps, because bouncing is a fun mechanic. Kids love to bounce on beds, and it's just always fun to do. We decided to do something that hadn't been done before. In Crash 2, um, all the enemies on the hang section you had to avoid. You couldn't um, specifically attack any particular enemy. And in this game, Crash will actually get to fight enemies while hanging. Our biggest challenge has been how to add more depth and excitement. I've always been proud of how Crash's moves need to be used in combination. Uh, the new moves, of course, are great. Well, we've, got all, we've got a bunch of power-ups that you gain across the, g the game as you play. And what's really nice about that is basically the character grows as you're playing. Crash Warped has combinations like the slide, double jump, death tornado, which add greatly to the depth of the gameplay. At first, they'll just jump on an enemy, but after they get good at the combo, now they'll slide, jump, jump, and hover and come down on them at a, at a much more aggressive style. The deaths are an important part of this game, what we learned in 2 is that people, if they die and there's something funny that happens at the end of it, it sort of softens the blow of taking a hit. We have the game designers uh, come up with their wacky ideas of what we should do, and we have the artists uh, coming up with their editions of what would look cool with that idea or what would be best suited for that idea. Well, we start out with the uh, just a rough 
vignettes just to get the feel of which direction we should go. And then uh, once we see that we're in the uh, right environment, then we go straight to the line art. And the line art is a more finished artwork that leads eventually to being a color key, which uh, has the actual palette of, the, of that level. So that way we can take different elements of the warped background and go to the computer and start modeling and start making textures and start applying lighting and, and coloring and things like that. Or I can also do a lot of palette shifts. And if, for example, I can take the daytime and I can make a nighttime version of it rather quickly. There have been a lot of really proud moments for Naughty Dog in the Crash series, but I think maybe the proudest moment has been seeing the culmination of technical achievements and artistic achievements that came together with some of our water levels in Crash Bandicoot Warped. Our, our ocean level is just beautiful. I think we have a gameplay style that is truly new and truly unique. And I think that it's extremely fun, and on top of that, technically, it's an extremely hard achievement. Well, you've crashed a few parties before, but I never expected you to make it this far. Now I have to lay down a challenge to the PlayStation Underground viewers. I've heard that you are some of the best video game players, some of the best PlayStation players out there. And I want to see if that's actually true. The Naughty Dogs, all of the Sony testers, our Sony producers, as well as Mark Cerny, have been playing our time trial mode, and you'll be able to find in the credits of the game what all of our best times were. You don't turn back. I will inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe! And the challenge is, can you actually beat that time? And I have to say, within that group of people, there are some darn good players, so it's going to be quite a challenge. So the challenge is out to you now.